Hey y'all, my name is Christian, I'm a millennial, and this is the Millennial Mind. Millennials get a bad rap for being lazy, non-productive members of society. We also get told that our opinions are warped and don't matter. This podcast is designed to express a point of view on the world as a whole, but from a millennial's perspective. I will talk about love, current events, pretty much everything that comes to mind. Come join me on this journey on Speaking My Mind, and I would love for you to speak your mind as well. This podcast is sponsored by Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere, even on platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, you can download the Anchor app, that's A-N-C-H-O-R, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey y'all. Welcome to another episode of The Millennial Mind. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of speaking my mind. And I hope that all of you are speaking your mind as well. How was your Thanksgiving? I just want to know. My Thanksgiving was good. It was very relaxing. I didn't do too much. Um... I cooked a little bit for me and my husband. And then because my husband works nights, I went over to my parents' house for for pretty much the entire weekend because my husband, he was going to be working um, almost the entire weekend. So I went over my parents' house Thanksgiving night. Of course, my mom cooked for like, the (laughs) 5,000, even though there were like less than 10 people there at the house. It was um, a pretty small Thanksgiving from what she usually has, but she cooked like she had an army of people to feed. So of course I partook (laughs) of that. (laughs) Um, Then I did some shopping on Friday and then came back home on Saturday so my Thanksgiving was low-key and you know what what I've um, been seeing is that people are um, kind of shying away from the traditional Thanksgiving food so it's no longer like the turkey and the ham which you know some people they still have that but I've noticed that a lot of people are getting away from that now. Like, for example, my mom, she made salmon for Thanksgiving. Who ever heard of that? Salmon. And then me, I was trying to look up non-traditional meats that I could cook for me and my husband. I still winded up doing a turkey. I actually did a turkey breast wrapped in bacon, which was Oh, it was so good. And I also did Kernish Hens, which if you're not familiar with Kernish Hens, it's basically a small chicken, a small whole chicken. Um, it's a hen. <laughs> so so they're smaller. Um, and so I did about three Kernish Hens. And yeah, I so, so I sort of shied away from traditional meats, but... Not really. I mean, at least my turkey came wrapped in bacon. Okay. Well, it was a turkey breast. Wrapped in bacon. Now, I tried to shy away from the traditional um, way of doing things, but 
you know, I almost made the mark, but not quite. So uh, I hope that your Thanksgiving was wonderful and that you were able to relax and then take time to actually be grateful and thankful for what you do have. Um, that's something that I was sitting and, and meditating on was what I was thankful for, what I was grateful for. Um, and if you have a chance, I, I know Thanksgiving is over, but that doesn't mean that the spirit of thankfulness and gratitude has ceased. Um, if you can take a listen to my previous episode on five things that I'm grateful for, um, I know some of them may be silly, but um, for, for for the most part, I'm being sincere as to um, the things that I'm grateful for. So take a listen if you can. Okay, so I am going to get into today's topic. Um, the title of this episode is going to be, I'm Too Sexy, Am I? And let me just kind of give a background as to what I'm referring to. No, you know, I'm not being um, I'm vain or I'm not being prideful in my looks. Once you hear the background story, then you'll get an idea as to what I'm referring to. So it all started maybe... I would say maybe a few years ago, um, well, I I would say a couple years ago, I saw this dress on Fashion Nova. Don't judge me with Fashion Nova. (laughs) Like, sometimes you hit the mark with the clothes, sometimes you don't, okay? But it's inexpensive, and I live for a good deal. That's just me. And then two, I'm cheap. But some people tell me not to say that I'm cheap. They tell me to say I'm frugal. However way you want to classify it, I'm that. That is me. (laughs) Okay. But back to my story. So I saw this dress on Fashion Nova that I loved. And so I bought it. It was a burnt orange mini dress and when I got it you know I tried it on I'm like okay this is a nice fitted dress it shows off um you know my body which I'm very proud of you know I'm not ashamed of it but at the same time it's conservative it doesn't show everything and I'm not the kind of person that shows everything because I want to leave something to the imagination that's just me (laughs) you know I feel like if I show the legs you know then don't show the boobs if I show the boobs you know don't show the legs now usually I don't show boobs that's just me I I really don't have boobs to show maybe that's it But no, even if I did have boobs to show, I just don't feel comfortable showing the boobs. That's just me. If you feel comfortable, you know, showing the boobs, do you, boo-boo. That's just not my ministry. But anyway, um, the dress showed off my body and I thought it was a classy way. So I'm like, okay, this is great. I'm going to find a day that I can wear this dress. So the perfect opportunity came for my husband's birthday. Um, We went downtown Chicago for his birthday a few months ago. We had went to dinner. I took him to STK Steakhouse, which if you've never been there, like you got to go. And and usually with like these high class, restaurants I'm like the food is okay you know I just came well I I just spend money on the food being pretty at STK Steakhouse not only was food pretty but it was actually good I spent you know an entire paycheck (laughs) for the food not really but I, I spent a good amount of money for the food but it was good it was good 
Well, once I save up some more pennies and dimes and nickels, <laughs> I will be going again. Me and my husband will be going again. But went downtown, had dinner with him, so I wore the dress. Okay? He liked the dress, so he took pictures of me in the dress. And I think they were more candid pictures because I wasn't really paying attention to him taking the pictures. I was actually trying to make sure that my dress was looking okay. So recently, I posted these photos on my Facebook page and I posted them as my cover photo. I posted it not because, you know, I was trying to show off or anything like that. I was just proud of my body. Um, in, in the past, I've had issues with self-esteem, um, being comfortable with my body, with myself, accepting myself for what it was and not how I wanted it to be, um, which, which that was a struggle. That, that was a struggle for me. And I came from a household where my parents would constantly say like, oh, you're beautiful. You can do whatever you want to do, whatever you put your mind to. But it didn't really manifest until I believed it for myself, which just shows that, you know, it doesn't matter if people say that you're pretty or whatever. If you don't believe it, then girl, you ain't pretty. <laughs> there, there, there ain't nothing in the world um, that could change your thinking as far as you being pretty if you don't believe it yourself. So, um, so I had those issues going on and I was happy that I was at the point where I overcame those issues. And then two, I was working out. Um, shout out to Regina. <laughs> Regina and Gabby, if they're listening, um, those are my trainers and they've been working my body down. You feel me? You know, they've, (laughs) they, they've been beating my body up, but then, you know, I would be mad. I would be mad at the both of them because I'd be waking up sore and be like, body, what body do I have? I have no body, (laughs) no body whatsoever. But then I started to see the results and, you know, changing my eating habits and just trying to practice self-care because that's part of it. It's part of um, self-care, not just like the massages and going on vacations, you know, by yourself or whatever. It's about controlling what goes in your body and the activity that your body is engaging in. So that, that was part of my thing and I was starting to see the results. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm going in, in the right direction. And that was part of, um, me building my self-esteem as well. So, so it all came together and falls under the, it falls under the umbrella of self-esteem for me. So posted these pictures. I was proud of them. I got some positive comments and all of a sudden I get phone calls. I get phone calls basically saying that my pictures were distasteful. Um, they weren't right. One male figure that I look up to said that I wasn't right for posting it for two reasons, for posting the pictures rather. He said it wasn't right for two reasons. First, because the pictures should have been between me and my husband. Now, and I'll, you know, I'll give you my little commentary on these pictures and and maybe I'll post them so that you can see what I'm talking about and let me know your thoughts. But in regards to it being between me and my husband, it was between me and my husband because I wore the dress with my husband and then it was for his birthday. It's not like I wore it 
um, you know, to a club or something, which I'm not a club person anyway, but, you know, I, I wasn't going by myself wearing this dress. I was with my husband. And then, you know, my husband, he didn't have a problem with it. Okay. So, so I'm having this male figure calling me, telling me, you know, that it should be between me and my husband. It is between me and my husband. Okay. And then, um, it, it, it's my Facebook page. So whatever I put on my Facebook page will be my business. You know, I have control over that because the name on the page says Christian Fuller. It doesn't say anybody else's name. So because it has my name on it, that means I control whatever content is or is not on that page. And I think that's what's um, been an issue with social media for a while. Because people, they have a glimpse into your life. They feel like they can, you know, whatever glimpse they, they do see, they feel like, you know, their opinion on that glimpse matters. <laughs> And it, it really doesn't. And that's where you get like the trolls and everything. But that's that's a whole nother episode. It is. I actually did an episode on that social media. Um, so take a listen to that if you can. But yeah, that, that was the first thing. He said that that picture should have been between me and my husband. The second reason why he said I should not have posted the pictures really got me because this is this is a standing view of a lot of people when it comes to women and the way that we dress so he said that I'm causing other men to lust I'll repeat the dress that I was wearing was causing other men to lust well, 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 not just the dress that I was wearing. The fact that I posted it on social media was causing other men to lust. I'm like, who? That's a that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of responsibility. Like me, this picture is causing men to lust. Like, come again. And and I told him, I said, well, why don't we just tell the men not to lust? I didn't post the picture for men to lust. That wasn't my intention. My intention was that the picture was cute. I posted it on social media because it's my page. End of story. But then, you know, we have viewpoints like this where... You know, if you post certain things, you're causing other people to lust or do wrong. First of all, I don't have that kind of power. I don't. (laughs) People do wrong because they want to do wrong. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay. (laughs) Absolutely nothing. So, so, so I was, I I was a little taken aback. And when I said that, oh, why don't we just tell the men not to lust? He got quiet. Because it's true. Why, why do women have to control what they do and what they wear and what they say on the account of a man? In order to protect the man. That, that, that never made sense to me. And, and I'll get into that in a minute. But it kind of. That viewpoint kind of made me think about. How people think when it comes. Um, to rape. And sexual assault. Um, there have been some rapers. And sexual assaulters. Who have said. That, oh, yeah, you know, I raped or sexually assaulted this person because, you know, they had on these clothes and 
that invited me to do what I did. And of course, you know, people are like, okay, that makes sense. The heck it does. <laughs> how does that make sense? How, how does what I wear invite you to violate me? So, so because I'm wearing a fitted dress that just invites you to slap my butt because I was asking for it. No, you're going to get slapped back. <laughs> you are going to get slapped the heck back. No, that wasn't an invitation for you to do whatever you want to do. That was never the purpose. And I'm sure that's for a lot of women. Of course, you know, there there's some exceptions. Maybe there are some women who are really trying to intentionally entice someone to um, do certain things. I'm not talking about those women, okay? I'm talking about women like me and like a whole lot of other women. I, and I would think it would be the majority of women who are not asking for that at all. And, and, and it just feeds into um, this idea of males being superior and then women being inferior and frail. Okay. And, and, and that's just something I'm not here for. Yeah, and, and, and it's like this notion of um, women being the cause for men being so weak and frail. Like, oh, this this woman wore this nice dress and heels and I just had to have her. So I just was like compelled to grab her butt. I was compelled to grab her in places that she did not request or ask for. It's like, what kind of man are you? What kind of man are you? Just weak and frail. First of all, I wouldn't want that type of man. Sounds kind of sketchy to me. Don't that sound like a sketchy man to you? Just like weak and frail and can't control themselves. No self-control. Just can't control themselves because they see some kind of, uh, they, they see some kind of woman dressed a certain way and they just gotta have her can't control themselves you know can control by you know the bottom head instead of the top head I wouldn't want that type of man but that's just me so why are women held up to the standard of being the reasoning or the cause behind the man's shortcomings or downfalls. To be honest, I think this is this started with Adam and Eve. If if you're familiar with the Bible, you'll know the whole creation story, how God created the earth in seven days. Or I'm sorry, wow, <laughs> PK kid, six days and rested <laughs> on the seventh day. And within that six-day period, he created humans, human life. And what is believed to be um, the first man and woman is Adam and Eve. Now, I know this is debatable. I know that there are um, a lot of theories out there that Adam and Eve was not the first man and woman, that there were... Um, people before them but just for argument's sake let's just say you know that Adam and Eve was the first man and woman okay so of course God created Adam first the man and then he created well let me back up he created Adam and then you know he put Adam to sleep took you know a part of his rib and created Eve a woman and he was saying Adam you know you're going to be the ruler of the earth so you're the head and then Eve you know you're going to be the helpmate so you're going to um, make sure that whatever the man um, and, and I should say it this way 
you're 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 just gonna make sure that the man gets the help that he needs. Okay. So, and and and, and that's been carrying on for centuries, um, years. There's that notion: the man is the head, the woman is the helpmate. And that's what we've been doing time and time again as women is helping. And so I think that we help so much that we pacify and baby these men. If they do something wrong on their own accord that had nothing to do with you, that we feel like if we could have changed something on our end, then maybe it wouldn't have happened. I see this a lot with cheating. When a man cheats on a woman. Um, And you know. And and I wouldn't say vice versa. Let's just say. Let's just stick with the man cheating on the woman. And men. I'm not trying to beat up on you. I'm just trying to get my point across. So. I see this a lot with cheating. Like when a man cheats on a woman. The woman kind of blames herself. For for the incident and thinks that if she would have done something differently, then maybe it would have caused him not to cheat. Like, oh, if I would have cooked, you know, all seven days of the week instead of five days of the week, then, you know, maybe he wouldn't have, you know, thought of cheating. Or maybe if I would have had sex with him five times a week, five plus times a week then maybe he wouldn't have cheated. Or maybe if I would have dressed a certain way, then maybe he wouldn't have cheated. No, boo, he cheated because he wanted to cheat. Cheating is a choice. I don't care what nobody say. People say like, oh, you know, it just happened. No, that is a process. That is something that you think about. And then when you thought about it, you chose to act upon that thought. It's, it's a choice. So, so, so there's nothing that you could have done that would have caused him not to cheat. That's just me. There, there's nothing that could have been done to, to prevent that. And so we have put ourselves as women... We, we have put ourselves in a position where we are, um, we have the mindset where we think that, you know, we're responsible for the men's downfalls. And that's not how it should be. That's not how it should be. We have put so much pressure on ourselves. And why do we do that? Why, why do we put the pressure on ourselves and entitle men to double the pressure on us? Men need to take responsibility for their, for their own actions. And I I know this works vice versa, but I'm just trying to make a point. So just bear with me. Um, take, take Amber Rose, for example, Amber Rose, she is a model and she used to date Wiz Khalifa and I'm and Kanye West and I'm not sure who else she dated. I don't really follow her like that. <laughs> but she did um have this campaign going on that basically stated, you know, no matter what I'm doing, no matter what I'm wearing, That does not entitle you to touch me or to have sex with me. So she went to uh, the extent saying, you know, even if I'm naked in front of you. As a man, if I'm if I'm the woman and even if I'm naked in front of you, that shouldn't cause you to want to touch me or to have sex with me. That doesn't entitle you to touch you, to touch me or have sex with me. Which, you know, I <laughs> the, the, that's extreme. 
first of all, why am I going to be butt naked from you if I ain't getting none? That wouldn't be me. If I'm going to take off all my clothes and, and take the effort and use the energy to take off my clothes, you know, there's something else going to be happening. Okay. <laughs> we, we about to do the do. I ain't just taking off my clothes for nothing. <laughs> so, so what Amber was saying, it was a little bit extreme with the whole naked scenario, but I get what she was saying. Like what I do and what I say that does not entitle you as a man to do whatever you want to do with me. I still have a choice in the matter and you can't be that weak and that frail where you feel like, you know, you gotta have it just because it's there. No, sir. (laughs) So, so this kind of applies to my situation too. just kind of going back to my story, my choice to put a picture on social media should not be dependent on how a man or anyone would react to said picture. So, and and, and I believe that's part of the purpose of social media is to express yourself. That's through pictures, that's through statuses, that's through whatever you want to put on there. So what I put on social media as a woman, you know, of course, uh, as a woman, we, we're just beautiful creatures. You know, we're all different sizes. We're all different shapes. We're all different colors and, and textures. And, and you see that in social media. And, you know, as women, we're held back a lot because of beauty standards and, you know, what people think is pretty what what people think is socially appropriate as far as uh, what beauty is so we're already dealing with that and then we're dealing with you know these weak or frail men who feel like you know if we're dressed a certain way that they gotta have us and they can do whatever they want to do with us violate whatever so we're dealing with that and it's just a lot. It's a lot as, as, you know, dealing with what we're dealing with as women. Um, and, and whatever you post on social media, whether it's a status or a picture that doesn't entitle someone to come in and violate. It just doesn't. Um, so what I did was after this conversation with um, this male figure in my life, I made the decision to keep the picture on there. I kept the picture up. And I guess he saw that because what he wanted was after the conversation we had to, for me to take the picture down. But I refused. I refused because, you know, first, I'm not trying to entice any men. Okay, I'm married. I'm married. Sure, you know, it's it's nice to know, you know, that I still got it as a married woman. But, I mean, that's where my own self-confidence comes in. I know I do. I don't need no man to to express that to me, like, oh, yeah, girl, you know, you still got it. No, I I know I still got it. I don't need no man to validate that for me. But anyway, like, just I I, I decided to keep the the picture up there um, for, for my own self and then just to show other women as well that you don't need a man to validate you, to validate your decisions, to validate what you do, what you say. You validate your own self. 
And whatever you do, whatever you say does not entitle anyone to come into your personal space and violate that. So I saw um, the male figure that I had this conversation with and he said that there's going to be a part two to the conversation. I don't even want to engage in this part two because I don't think it's necessary. But, you know, even, you know, if he expresses himself a second time, I'm still going to keep the picture up there. Because this is a stance that I'm taking um, to let people know that, you know, it's okay to express yourself. And you can do that without validation from anyone. That's social media. That's That was the underlying purpose, the underlying premise of social media. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm not changing that just because, you know, there are some people out there who can't control themselves. So what do you think? What do you think? Do you feel like, you know, I should have kept the picture up? Or do you think I should have taken it down? Make sure to comment on our Facebook page, The Millennial Mind. You can also send me your comments to our email at mindofmillennials at gmail.com. Also, make sure to listen to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and Pocket Cast. Um, also, because I am in the giving spirit, because Christmas is near, um, I wanted to um, give and just express my gratitude to the listeners. So I'm having a giveaway for the entire month of December. So for this week's giveaway... I want you to tag three people in the comments of a Facebook post with this podcast episode attached. Then email me at mindofmillennials at gmail.com and let me know a list of topic ideas that you would like for me to discuss in the future. Winner will be chosen at random and will receive a Visa gift card. So make sure you participate in this giveaway in order to um, have a chance to win this Visa gift card. And the winner will be announced on next week's episode. So once again, in order to be entered into the giveaway, tag three people in the comments of a Facebook post with this podcast episode attached. Then email me at mindofmillennials at gmail.com and let me know a list of topic ideas that you would like for me to discuss in the future. Winner will be chosen at random. So make sure you don't miss your chance on that. And before I leave you guys today, I wanted to, of course, like I do every week, just give you guys a quote that you all can meditate and marinate on for this week. Um, and the, the quote is as follows. A woman is human. She is not better, wiser, stronger, more intelligent, more creative, or more responsible than a man. Likewise, she is never less. Equality is a given. A woman is human. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and until next week, I will see you soon.